Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of CozyRuck's SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2012. The CozyRock tasks and components are available for SQL Server Integration Services 2005, 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, and 2014 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Dataflow Task Plus. I've already demonstrated how to configure packages in two previous videos. In this video, I'm going to focus on how to map columns when the names don't match. In the previous videos, the column names matched, so Dataflow Task Plus was able to map the columns without any guidance from me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle a more complex situation. This scenario required me to set up a table that shows Dataflow Task Plus how to map the columns from the source to the destination. I'm going to go quickly through the configuration without much explanation since I have shown how to set most of this configuration up before. I will slow down my explanation when I'm showing anything related to the mapping of columns. Here are the requirements for the package I'm going to configure. Like in the video named Excel Import, I'm going to be using Excel files as the source. All the columns will be transferred into a single SQL Server table. The Excel files have some different columns and different numbers of columns. Column names don't match between the Excel files and the SQL Server table. We have some columns that are named the same in each of the Excel files, but they map to different columns in SQL. Conversely, columns with different names in the Excel files map to the same column in the SQL table. Now here's what our source Excel files look like. As you can see, all three of the files have columns called style and color. And then two of the files have a column called size. And then they each have a column that has an address in it, but the column name is different in each of them. And all of those will be mapped to the same column in our SQL Server table. The other columns will all be mapped to columns with a different name in our SQL Server table, and I'll show you that now. Here's the mapping table I created. All three of the columns containing addresses in the Excel files will be mapped to a column named address in the SQL Server table. Then the style column from the Excel file named hair will be mapped to hairstyle in this table. Likewise, the style column from the Excel file named hats will be mapped to hat style in this table. You get the idea. Now we'll get into the configuration of the package. First, we'll drag the for each loop container onto our control flow canvas. And we'll change the name to loop through Excel files. And then we go to the collection tab. And we'll set up a couple of expressions, same as we did before. So we set up directory and use the variable called directory. And then we'll also select the property file spec and we'll use the file ext variable. And we want to select name only. And now we select the variable file name. That's the variable that's going to be changed every time through the loop. Now we use the execute SQL task and we'll be using it twice. The first time we're going to use it to read the worksheet name because each uh, Excel file has a different worksheet name. And I do have a table set up for that. I didn't show it to you this time. So we select single row for the result set and we select the connection manager for the SQL Server table. And now I'm going to paste in the select statement that I already had set up. Now we'll go to parameter mapping. And in place of that question mark, we want to load the file name. Now for a result set, of course, we want to get the worksheet name. Now 
Now we're done configuring this execute SQL task. Now we're going to use it again. And this time we'll be loading in the whole column mapping table into the variable that's an object variable. And now I'll slow it down a little bit since this is the part that has to do with the column mapping. So for result set this time, we'll choose full result set. And we choose the connection manager for the SQL Server table. Now I have to go get the SQL statement that I already had set up. You can see it there that we're pulling the source column and the target column based on the file name. And we're going to set up the file name part of it right now. So here's where we use the file name variable again. And that's the basis for the lookup in our select statement. And now for our result set, we put zero for the result name. Then we choose our per file column mapping variable to load the whole mapping table into. And I haven't edited the properties for the connection managers yet, so I'll go do that now. We set delay validation to true. And we set retain same connection to false. And then we have to set up an expression so that it'll use the uh, correct name for the Excel file each time through the loop. We go to Excel file path and we set it up to use the variable file location. And now we'll go in and edit the properties for the connection manager for our SQL Server. And again, we'll set delay validation to true. And that's all we need to do there. Now we'll use the data flow task plus and put that in our for each loop container. Of course, we have to go set up the Dataflow Canvas first before we can finish configuring Dataflow Task Plus. So we'll use the Excel Source Plus component to read the columns from the Excel files. And so we choose the Connection Manager for Excel. And we choose the Worksheet, which of course will be changing as we loop through. And we want to set the width to minus one. And there you see all the columns in the first Excel file that we're pointing at, but we need to go into the advanced editor. And we're going to set validate external metadata to false, and we need to get rid of those columns. So we'll go to input and output properties. So we'll need to delete all of the columns except for one and change that to a thunk column. And here I accidentally deleted all of them, so I need to add one back for the thunk column. And because I had to add this back in as a new column, I need to set up the data type. And then I also want to fix the length to match the length of the output columns. And now we'll use the OLADB destination component. And we'll go into configure it. Now we need to use the advanced editor to finish the configuration. We go to component properties and we want to set validate external metadata to false. And we'll go to column mappings and we need to remove those columns. So we go to external columns and delete all but the last one, which as usual, we'll change to a thunk underscore column. Now we go back to column mappings and they're mapped. 
And now we take a look at the input columns, and you see the thunk column there. We need to change the data type and the length. And now everything matches. Now we need to edit the properties for the data flow canvas. because we need to s change the Excel worksheet property so that it uses the variable that we set up for this and that we populated with the first execute SQL task. Now we go back to the control flow canvas so we can finish configuring data flow task plus. We go to the dynamic tab and set both the source and the destination to enabled and now we're getting into more configuration specifically for the mapping of columns. So we click on the orange tab to expand the options. And we set is mapping variable to true. And then we click on mapping variable and we choose our per file column mapping variable. And now we can execute it. And it was successful. We'll go take a quick look at the execution results and everything looks good there. And I will display the contents of our mapping demo table. And there you can see all of the columns have been mapped properly to their respective columns. In this demonstration, I showed you how to use Cozy Rock's Data Flow Task Plus to set up dynamic data flows. I transferred data from Excel files to a single SQL Server table. The names of the columns in the Excel files didn't match the names of the columns in SQL, so I had to tell Data Flow Task Plus how to map the columns. I even handled the case where columns with different names in the Excel files were mapped to the same column in SQL. I accomplished all of this without using different data flows for each transfer. Changes to the metadata were accommodated at runtime, greatly reducing the need to manually modify the data flow design when new source and destination columns must be handled. This task comes in the library of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.